As one of Handel's biographers aptly remarked, nothing is so difficult to criticize as the familiar. And to English musicians who have known every note of the Messiah from their childhood, it is especially difficult to get, as it were, outside the work, to banish the associations that have clustered around it, and to regard it as a work of art, pure and simple. To some, the Messiah is a thing above all criticism. And indeed, it is so beautiful, so inspiring, that to fall upon it and pick it to pieces seems more than a waste of time. The Messiah tells the story of man's redemption. It is divided into three sections. The first setting forth the promise of the Redeemer, the birth of Christ and his mission of healing. The second part is devoted to the establishment of the kingdom of God upon the earth, the preaching of the gospel and the ascension. The third explains the Christian belief in the resurrection of the body, and the oratorio ends with the triumph of the redeemed. The music of the Messiah throughout is more simple in character than most that Handel wrote. Except in the choruses, the accompaniments are written with extreme simplicity. For this drama of human redemption, Handel must instinctively have felt required austere treatment, not the picturesque form of orchestration he had formerly used. A synopsis of the progress of the oratorio may perhaps interest you. The overture, gloomy and foreboding, pictures the world plunged in sin. On this scene, strikingly comes the recitative, Comfort ye my people, a thrilling effect. This is followed by every valley and several other lesser known parts until the air, but who may abide, is reached. Later in the first part comes the pastoral symphony depicting the shepherds in the field, which is followed by the joyful glory to God chorus. Then we hear three other numbers, until the chorus, his yoke is easy, closes the first portion. The first solo number of the second part is, He Was Despised, in which the note of desolation is again heard. The next prominent portion is the world-famous Hallelujah Chorus, in which the whole earth joins in a paean of triumph over the victory of Christianity. The third section opens with the air, I know that my Redeemer liveth, a chaste, austere melody for the soprano voice. Then follow several brief selections, and the final chorus, Worthy as the Lamb, closes the oratorio. I have not mentioned the great basso air, Why to the Nation, as I thought it better to speak of this separately. It occurs before the Hallelujah Chorus in the second part. Up to this point, the spread of the gospel has been depicted. Now comes the picture of the vain wrath of the heathen, who flout its message, who scorn it. This is graphically shown in the air, Arthur Middleton sings for us here. Before I stop, I must explain that Mr. Middleton is an American basso who has risen very nearly to the top in the operatic world. As you doubtless know, he is a member of the Metropolitan Opera Company. 